All right, well, it's uh, 3.06, so I think we're going to get started. PK's ready. I'm ready. Andrew seems pretty ready. <laughs> BP is ready. Well, you know, if our founding father is ready, then I guess we should all be ready to go. All right. So, welcome, guys. Uh, thank you for taking the time to stop by and watch me ramble about things that I kind of know how to do. <laughs> um... So you all can hear me, that's good, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. So, first things first, I'm just gonna show you guys a, um, a couple of things that I have done, and most of these are pretty old, so they're not the greatest. I have gotten better, thankfully. But we're mainly going to be focusing on stuff like this one up here that I've circled and this one down here. Mostly more like this one. The others are more like photo manipulations and they're combined together. And PK kind of mentioned that I'd be going over that briefly. Probably not so much in this session, but like that. I would definitely, but if you guys wanted something a little bit more, definitely be up to doing another class on that. But in... This one, we're just going to talk about mostly taking a picture of yourself and completely revamping it. Like drawing over yourself, drawing clothes, drawing hair, just completely revamping it. Basically, you're just using yourself as a physical base. It's really good if you're having, you know, trouble either trying to draw yourself or draw a friend or if you're not so good with anatomy yet it's a good way to just get a person in there without actually having to draw them now I would encourage you to you know practice figure drawing so you can you know draw everything but this is just kind of a fun way to play around and use the image load um, option in sketch club in a productive way all right so if you want to take some notes, we're going to get into the main chunk of the lesson. So uh, just let me know if you guys are all ready for that. First we have, you have to think of an idea. It's just a pretty basic first step, but it's a really important one. Some good ways to come up with ideas is to do thumbnail sketches. And thumbnail sketches are just little tiny, messy, rough ideas of where you want things. Where do you want the person? What do you want the background to look like? Are there any details that you want to remember for when you're finishing up the sketch? Just kind of things like this. <laughs> um, yeah, you can put yourself in a burrito, Black Pond. That's a wonderful idea. The second way to come up with ideas is sometimes you don't really have one, but if you've ever like seen a pose or seen a picture and come up with an idea, that's kind of what we're going for. Sometimes you just have to find the right picture or you have to put your camera on a timer and just make a bunch of funny faces, do different action poses, and when you review them, maybe something will come to you. It's kind of weird, but it works for some people. And the third option is to find a reference. Now, here's some important things about references. One, always give credit. And references should be used more as kind of doing your own take on them. We don't want to copy it exactly. There will be a lot of similarities, but you don't want to become a copy machine.
So steps one and two, I think I explained pretty well. Um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to steps three and four. Now, I'm going ahead and zoom in a little bit more on step three here, because we're going to get a little bit more in depth with this, and that's isolating yourself. Um, up here, I just have my reference picture next to the picture I'm going to be using, just to, you know, show you what we're starting with. Um, but you're going to want to remove the background from the actual picture of you. And the reason this is important is because later on you're going to be deciding how you put yourself in a background. Whether you use a pre-existing one, whether you use one made of a collage of photos, or whether you draw it all yourself. Now, if you're going to draw it all yourself, you argu arguably could leave the background in there, but it just makes it a lot easier if you're separate, so anything you draw in your hands, or any clothes you draw, or the hair you draw, if you want to move yourself at any point in time within the picture, having yourself isolated from the background will really, really help you out. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm just going to switch gears a little bit here, and we're going to move to this lovely pug picture that I drew a while back. So I'm just going to show you how I would go about um, erasing the edges. I prefer to have slightly softer edges when I erase because when you erase with something like vector or a hard brush, you usually get these kind of harsh edges that don't blend so well into the background. So you want to be um, a little bit more careful. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here to my brush tool and scroll on up here to the soft brush, which is my favorite. Um, you want to make it pretty small um, between 1 and 10, it just kind of depends, and full opacity, and we're just gonna make sure that down here on the drop down, we have the erase on. Um, I mean, you could always just go to eraser and choose the soft one, but I've always just had my brushes handy as a preset so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna zoom in here and this takes a lot of patience. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the background color here for you so you can see a little better. We'll just change it to this dark red. But it, you just have to erase really carefully and it takes a while and it's a pain in the butt but when you are done with it you'll have something that's really nice and clean with the soft edge to it that blends in well and you can move it around and you will love yourself for it and you'll thank yourself for it. Now, imagine that I raced all the way around this pug, which I didn't, but just imagine that I did. If you want to not worry about keeping your image of yourself on a separate layer at all times and you want to, you know, do your background first and come back to yourself layer later, an option for you is to go to the drop down here under actions and go to where it says photos, send to photos, and you're going to want to save it in your photo library as a um, transparent PNG file. That way you have the main image of yourself removed from the background and you can just boot it back into your sketch at any point in time. I personally don't do this because I like to show that I only have the one image load and that's all I ever used, but it's up to you. Anyway, so yes, used a soft tool to erase around the edges and things will be great and dandy and you don't have to worry about backgrounds because those are a pain in the butt. Right, okay, so we're going to go back to this slide here and we're going to talk a little bit about how to clean yourself up a bit because remember how I said that the picture doesn't have to be great? This is how we make it great. You just draw all over your face and it's like you're perfect. <laughs> I myself normally do not look like the character I'm going for. I have dark to bright red hair and I have brown eyes. So my character has 
brown hair and light bluish gray eyes. So that's what I had to do. And to achieve this, I used the soft brush again. The soft brush will really be your friend in this instant. I use the soft brush for this. And what I do is on top of my picture, I set a layer to on because sometimes my strokes can get a little messy, especially when I'm softening out the general skin tone. Basically, I use the soft brush and I slowly, you know, I keep it on a low opacity and a small size and I slowly just build up the color and I add some better shading to the nose and around the eyes and I just kind of define it a little bit more. So it looks a little bit more cartoony, a little less realistic, a little more painted style. And basically what I did here is I fixed my eyebrows so the expression was a little better. I added some tears because the character at this point in time for my reference is a little bit distressed. Um, made my lips a little less pale, darkened the eyes. I basically just made some minor adjust adjustments to make it a little bit more cartoony and look a little bit cleaner than it did originally. Now the hair we'll get to later so don't worry about it but basically you're just gonna try and make yourself look completely different. Like I said you're using yourself as a canvas, you're using yourself as a base. I prefer to use the soft brush um, at different you know sizes and opacities to achieve this and uh, Basically, you can, you can do anything that you're comfortable with. The main thing here is knowing your style. If your style is more cartoony, you can definitely just kind of leave yourself alone and draw some silly bows and whatnot on top of yourself. Um, we'll get in more into that later, but it's, it's kind of versatile, this. But I prefer to make it a look a little bit more painful. And the shirt, I did the same process. I just drew vectored out shape and I used a layer above it set to on and used the low opacity hard brush and slowly build up my colors and blocked out the shading. And sometimes you have to um, do multiple steps of shading. You know, you have to block out the color and then you go back in and you add um, more low lights and then you go back another time and add highlights. It takes a while, it's a little time consuming, but as you can see from what I ended up with here, it turns out really nice if you just, you know, take the time to do it. And like I said, you don't have to do realism, but that's my preferred approach. go ahead and use the sketchier smooth brushes. Again, I use all these on very low opacities and I build up the color. For example, the gray on the shirt was black and I just built up the color because I had it on a low opacity. I find that works a lot better than trying to use a bunch of different shades, especially since, you know, you can get, like, especially with the blue, I ended up with some that were more gray, um, some that were more monochrome, and I wanted to stick with the same, like, dusty blue colors, so I basically just used the darkest blue I could get without it being black at a low opacity, and I built it up. That's what's really important here if you're going to do realism. Um, if you're doing cartoony stuff, do what you know. Who am I to tell you how to sketch? Just have fun with it, but this is how I would go about it if you're trying to go with that slightly photorealistic look. Alright, we're going to move on now, if everyone is ready, to uh, hair. And uh, as, you can, as you can see here, I have very, you know, magenta-y, raspberry, purpley, reddish hair. It's bright, it, it's really bright, and not brown. So we need to make it brown. And uh, <laughs> like the clothes, you gotta be patient, but your patience will be rewarded. So,
so I, I usually use the soft brush for that. No, just kidding. I use the hard brush for blocking out my colors. Sorry. That's just a base. We just have a nice brown base to go on top of. And I'm going to zoom in some more on these little swatchy things here. Then what I like to do is I like to go back to brushes, big surprise there, and take the hard brush, put it down to size 1, and put it between 80 to 100 opacity and take a really, really dark brown to black color and just do strokes in the direction that you want the hair. What you're doing is you're starting to build up strands and to make it look kind of realistic. I am not the best at doing realistic hair, but this is how I go about it. Um, I'm not quite sure who off the top of my head, but there are some sketch club artists who have made tutorials on how they do realistic hair in their portraits. So if you want to take a look at those before you come back to this sort of thing, uh, please feel free to do that. It will help you so much. I know it has helped me. Um, as well as just kind of doing my own thing. So now we have our base with our dark strands to start adding some texture. And here's where we start adding a median tone, this little third one here. Um, you add a slightly lighter brown amongst the darker strands. Now we have more of a toned effect and you're going to want to add the lighter strands around here because we're going in this direction. So the hair back here will be a little bit darker and it's going to be a little bit lighter and sunshiny up here. I know my explanations are really scientific, but that's the best way I can go about it. You're going to want to you're going to want to think of um light direction and where your hair would shine and where it would be darker. It's I mean, you'll get a hang of it with practice, um, but on this little swatch, the light would be here and the darkness would be over here. Um, and this final one is kind of taking steps two and three and putting them together. You're going to want to add some highlights where you feel like they're needed, and you're going to want to add some more darker strands where you feel like it needs to have a little bit more shadow to it. And basically, kind of comes out blurry, but... You just end up with something that actually looks more like actual hair, other than blobs of color, which is quite pleasant, actually. And for the bangs and the smaller strands of hair, you're just going to want to repeat that same process on a smaller scale. Now, the flyaway hairs, the loose hairs, the frizz, you're just going to take um, a size 1 hard brush at a medium to high opacity and just make strokes in the general direction of the rest of the hair um, just a little more spaced than the other pieces so it looks a little bit more natural. It adds less of a you know helmet hair look and more of a that's actually growing off the top of her head look. And it's kind of hard to see so I'm going to zoom in here but you see this little light patch here? You guys are going to want to remember that people have scalps and where their hair parts, they have some skin showing. So uh, you're, you're going to just want to take the flesh color of your subject, uh, preferably yourself in this case, and uh, go in and just add some really small strokes. And if it looks a little bit too much like you're starting to bald on the top of your head, just go back in with the mid-range brown, mid-range to dark brown color that I'm using here or that whatever color you're using and just add some strokes back in to look like there's hair growing out of the roots there. And uh, PK, I'm sorry you're bald, but here's your chance to have some hair again. So this is another happy lesson, I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry, PK. <laughs> I just had to. All right. I think we're about halfway through this, guys, and I only took up a half hour of your life. Now we're going to talk about the fun part. Details. Details, details, details. Details are really, actually, they become important to really pushing that sort of photorealistic effect. Um... And they're fun to play with. You know, you can add as many or as little as you want. And they're kind of a nice bonus for those people that zoom into your sketch. Uh, it's kind of like I spy for nerdy artists. It's like, oh, they did this and they drew that. And that looks really cool and that's pretty neat. 
So I'm just going to highlight some of... Aw, thanks for my little devil comment. I had fun drawing him. Uh, but basically I'm just going to highlight some things that I thought were pretty important to the piece, I guess. Um, up top, towards the face area, I did uh, draw some tears because the character is in distress. Um, my reference, the character did not have any tears. She was not crying, but I cry a lot. So... This personifies me. <laughs> um, the necklace, you know, I shaded it so it looked metallic. Um, it's a little bird cage. There's some loose strings from where the sleeve has had ripped, and there's some tears on the skirt showing the um, underlining of the skirt. You you basically just want to you know add as many details as you feel like or as possible. It just really helps bring everything together. Also, like I said, it helps with photorealism. And it's just, I don't know, details are fun. I have a lot of fun with details. Um, I mean, they're there for me, mostly, because I know they're there and they make me smile. But details are fun. You guys should, you know, have fun playing with them. You can add, like, little references to some of your other sketches. Or now's a good time to deviate from, say you're doing a character sketch like me. You can deviate from the character and add some personal touches. Like, say you have a favorite hat. You can draw this hat. Or maybe uh, if you're a guy and your character's wearing a suit, you know, in the little pocket, you can have something fun. Like, we'll use PK as an example again. Like, PK could have a little tiny picture of a truck tucked away. Or his favorite color, handkerchief. It's whatever. It's all good times. Now we get to talk about backgrounds. Backgrounds are just as important as the subject. Um, and as the details. Now, this this first one, um, I just kind of took the background from my reference and placed my picture on top of that. Now, that is a way you can do it. I really don't recommend it, but if you're at a loss, then you can. And that's why isolating your photo early on was so important, because you can just put yourself anywhere, and it becomes really handy. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth with backgrounds. So yes, you can draw it all, which is expert mode. You can merge images together to make a collage, which is, eh, takes a little bit of skill, but not too bad. And if you paste yourself in a background, it's almost too easy. Um, but you're going to want to be careful with the third option, because if you pick a really random background to put your subject in, it's not gonna look so great. I mean, my character here looks extremely out of place in this tropical generic desktop wallpaper. So, <laughs> you're not gonna want to do that. That's not really what you should do. After all, this is Sketch Club. So, I'm gonna go into depth about talking about how I went about drawing it. Now, we get to, uh, we get to talk about drawing the background. Now, this isn't my finished piece yet. I'm still actually working on it, adding more details and more things to the background, but I had to work a lot this week, so this is the best I have right now. Um, but drawing your background is the best option, in my opinion, because the style in which you drew on the clothes and the hair for yourself That'll tie in to your background. It'll help everything blend together. It'll look a lot more like one whole piece. And that's what you really want with this. You want to make your photo part of it. You don't want to make it separate from it. The whole idea is to incorporate it and not make it look like, you know, a sore eye or something. I'm trying to think of good metaphors for this, but they're escaping me at the moment. Um, and all of the background I drew again with the whole you draw a vector shape and you use the brushes on top of it uh, and it, it will take you a while depending on how good you are at it or how you know just how you draw um, but it it I feel like it brings it together I feel like it's really good practice uh, you get to play around with different textures. I know that some users here have been generous enough to upload textures for the wood. 
Um, and other, you know, surfaces, marble, tile, plaster, that sort of thing. Um, I drew all of it because I wanted to practice again. It, it takes a little bit of shading know-how and a little bit of patience, but, I mean, if you want to cut some time, you can always use the mirror tool, which is a bit of a handicap, but it also can be kind of useful. Um, you can really do anything with it. And like I said, if you have more of a cartoony style and you did the clothes cartoony, by all means, go ahead and make a happy, bright, sunshiny, cute little cartoony thing in the background. You can really do almost anything with these. Um, and that's important, is customization and making it personal and having fun with it. Again, this is just trying to show you guys a really positive way to use the image load option. Uh, it gets a bad rep because a lot of people just upload, you know, random things, random pictures that kind of clutter up the gallery space, but this is a good way to use it. It's question time. And, I mean, I'd like to think I covered everything, but I'm pretty sure people have questions. So I will be happy to answer as many as possible. I'll talk about how I go about things. If you um, are curious about it, I can go more in depth than that. Um, just overall, if you want mini classes on some of the things I talked about here, you can go ahead and message me about that. I'll try and organize a way to um, show you how to do that in a private lesson if you'd like, or I can organize another group one. Um, it would be considerably shorter than this was, but, uh, yep. Uh, why do I use, okay, did I color the hands also? Um, now this isn't the finished piece. Um, I still have a lot of details to add to the hands. Uh, it's kind of gory, gotta add some blood to the hands. Um, if you wanted to smooth out the hands a little bit, you could. Um, my hands aren't painted. It's just the pictures of my hands that are there. Uh, how many layers did I use? Ooh. Um, <laughs> I think I, uh, used like six. Six layers. Sometimes more. I don't know. I get really nervous about merging layers, so I use a ton of them. Uh, hash browns. Thank you, zombies. I love hash browns, actually. Um, let's see. Can anybody answer whiteboard tangle? Is that a thing we're doing this weekend? Send tangles are fun. Do a clothing cast class, Kiki? Okay. Well, I will definitely bump that up on my priority list of things to do in my free time. If people are interested in that. Um, let's see, any other questions I may have missed? Oh my gosh, James, yes, I do need a hundred layers. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm pretty sure I missed a couple questions. Uh, if I didn't answer your question, you can, or you can go ahead and ask them. Go ahead and ask them again, if there's any more. Uh, they don't have to be related to the sketch. If you're just wondering about this mysterious disembodied voice, I can answer questions about that too. And if you guys are headed out, you can go ahead and have a lovely day. And I thank you guys so much for coming and watching. I uh, hope you guys learned something. Uh, you guys can, you know, try it out. That'd be fun. Uh, when I finish my own sketch, I'll uh, post a competition invite if BP is up for that. Um, I hope you all have lovely days too. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the nice comments. It really means a lot to me. This is my first class, and I would definitely like to do some other ones. Also, quick self-promo. If you like me, if you like what I do, if you like my voice, uh, which is completely irrelevant, but thanks, I do sell some prints. So if you guys want to go check out my shop, there is information in the bio thing on my profile. Um... I'm open for doing more, you know, individual classes if you guys need that. Just, you know, whatever. Send me messages. I'll do what I can for you when I can. Do I